What's happening, people? Um, it's just a car. You know, I just came from working out, whatever the case may be. But, you know, I want to talk to you guys really fast, really quick about, um, you know, have you discovered your trinity? Um, the trinity that lives within you. You know, we, um, from a religious standpoint, we have a trinity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, and all of those things, you know, if you're a Christian and you, you know, you live by the Bible, you believe in the Bible, those things right there I taught to you, those are the Trinity, the Father, which is God, the Son, who is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter that Jesus left us when he left this world. Um, so, you know, it's a spiritual thing, but just speaking on the Trinity that lives within you, everybody is born with temples. You have temples right there on the, on the sides of your heads and in between those temples lies your brain. If one of your temples was to get really get hit really hard, you know, you can you can die. You can suffer severe brain damage. You you can suffer a vast amount of things. So, you know, within the Bible it says, you know, that your body is your temple. God resides in the temple. So if you think about that from a physical aspect, if God resides in the temple and you must take care of your temple, God resides in, your, in the temple. You know, the temple is your brain. And you have to take care of it because if you don't, you lose your God. Think about it. You know, just from a physical aspect, just being logical. And, you know, also with that being said, you know, to me, you know, just to break it down in logical terms where people understand Take care of that so that you don't lose that. You don't want to lose a God in you because you, without your brain, you can't think. Without your brain, you're dead. Bottom line, if, if your brain dies, you're dead. You're a vegetable. You cannot function. So clearly, without God, you cannot function. You know, whatever your God is, you can't function. So with that being said, we're going to break this thing down to the sun, which in biblical terms, the sun is Jesus Christ. So within my temple, you know, I have God, which is my brain. I got to protect it. And for the son, Jesus Christ, God let Jesus be born. Jesus was able to walk this earth. Um, he was a physical being creating a mass amount of miracles. He had such a power developed that, you know, you can't. He was able to perform miracles. And the only way you can perform a miracle, first and foremost, you have to believe in it. You, before anybody else believes in it, you have to believe in it. So when you believe in yourself, other people start to gravitate to you and they believe in you. And you can do so much more when not only do you believe in yourself, but others believe in you as well. So Jesus Christ, the son, you know, I already gave you who your God is. Now, the son is your physical body because you can't just go out here and think you're going to do it and actually put no action into it. So Jesus represents your physical body moving in action, performing those miracles that you're supposed to perform, doing those things that you're supposed to do. So Jesus Christ, in the logical sense, is your body. You're out here doing all the things that you need to need to do, believing in yourself, making other making others believe in you also by the actions that you perform let me say that again making others believe in you by the actions that you perform okay not because they know you not because they grew up with you not at all it's because you're performing the actions that show them they should believe in you and it's probably not even going to be the people that you grew up with it's going to be probably total strangers because they're not judging you. They're judging you off of what they see. See, when you have a when you have people who grew up with you and know you, they have an emotional attachment to you. Now, how hard is it for us as human beings to make decisions off of our emotions? And our emotions will sometimes make us make the wrong decision. So a person that has no emotional attachment to you, they can see what you bring to the table, a logical decision, they'll believe in you before the person that grew up with you or that known you all your life just think about it okay so that symbol you symbolize jesus christ because your physical body all right and now we go on to speak about the comforter which is the holy spirit according to biblical terms 
Okay? The Holy Spirit. Now, you can't see the Holy Spirit, but you know it's there. You can feel it. All right? You can't see it, but you can feel it. So, to me, the Holy Spirit is your consciousness, your intuition. You can't see it. You cannot touch it. But you can feel it. So, your consciousness is your Holy Spirit. Is the, is the equivalent to the Holy Spirit. And this is to me. It, I'm not an ordained pastor, preacher, prophetess, evangelist, none of the above. Just a logical person out here sitting and thinking about life's experiences and what, how I correlate things to myself. That's it. You know, I'm not trying to be a pastor, preacher, none of that. So don't take it as that. And I'm not a religious guru. I'm not. I'm just speaking on how I want to relate things to myself, my life, and hopefully can help someone. So your consciousness. Remember, when you do something wrong, no matter how old you are, something kicks in. You know, even if you're evil as a person, something still kicks in. Unless you're a sociopath and you have no feeling, that's different. But for the for the average individual, when you do something wrong, your consciousness kicks in. When you when you lie to somebody, your consciousness kicks in. When somebody tells you something that just doesn't sit right with you, your consciousness kicks in. Your intuition, you feel it. That's the Holy Spirit. You feel it. When you're in line with something, you feel it. Things are going right for you. You feel it. You can't touch it, but you feel it. So the Trinity for me is our brain, our body, and our consciousness. Our brain, our body, and our consciousness, or our intuition, however you want to lay it out. Those are my three things that I think that the Trinity in the physical aspect represents. And you can correlate it to your life um, in the biblical sense. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's just the Carl Williams official just saying a couple things. You can take it and run with it, apply it to your everyday life, however you feel. Or you can do nothing with it at all. If you like it, share it. Thanks.